What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to Wrenching Wrecked. If you notice, we got the bench kind of cleared off. I got a pile of tools I still got to put away. Shovel's out here with us. Bailey's running around in the yard. We got the moped moved off of the bench. So this is, it's as roller as it can get, but I'm waiting on tires. And parts are coming from California, so they're taking a little longer than I hoped. But here's where she sits. We did a glitter purple clear instead of a regular clear glittery rainbow sparkle to match the rest of what's in here. And I don't know how well this is gonna show up on the camera. I know when this was up on the bench and the lights were on top, the light was kind of wrapping here. You can't really see it. it just kind of looks teal. But there is a whole ton galactic clear, I think this is called. It is a rainbow sparkle. So it's a color shift-ish. The amount of flake on this bike is absolutely ridiculous. Daddy didn't want to go above and beyond and do every single component, all glitter. So we just got the subtleties. There's black trim panels that are going to go over this too. And the motor is going to drop underneath all of those. We got some new vinyl stickers made and I have the motor back on the bench. I've been putting off on taking this apart. I was going back and forth on whether or not I was going to do it, but it doesn't make sense. One, we're putting a kit on it. So it's going to be a 70 CC, not a stock 50 which means it's going to see way more power, double the power that it had before in terms of mile per hour top speed. It doesn't make sense not to spend 50 bucks and freshen up the bottom end. I'm not doing anything with the crank. Um, if you have a Pook or a Derby or a Honda Hobbit or a Moto Pecane, you can get an aftermarket stuffed crank, reasonable. Gorelli's, unfortunately, there's not a huge aftermarket for the cranks. Probably because the clutches are terrible. Absolutely terrible. They're rubber, they overheat, they melt, and then you run into all sorts of issues that we're probably gonna end up dealing with down the line. But for right now, I got the motor on the bench. We're gonna dig into this today, get this disassembled, and get this off to blasting because the hard part, the roller-ish, minus the wheels and the tires and the rolling component, are done. So wheels are coated. That was in the last video rubbers and parts got delivered today. I'm in an industrial complex at the shop. And for all of the 50 of you that actually watch these things, FedEx, if anybody works at FedEx, what is going on? <laughs> I have a million signs on the front door that say leave things at the front door of my shop. We got cameras all around the thing. They won't leave them. I don't know if it's a protocol thing or a higher up thing, whatever it may be, but it really sucks. They either leave me the little post-it on the door saying that parts aren't gonna come in, or they decide that they're gonna go to the main office of my complex, which has worse hours than I do, and leave them there. And hopefully I can get them tomorrow. So the plan is hopefully tomorrow, I will have rubber on the wheels, which worked out because I took the brake plates apart and we're gonna coat those too. So purple wheels, purple mag wheels, uh, the brake plates, one of which definitely looks like the Millennium Falcon. I never thought about it that way, but Dottie brought it up and she is 100% right. Uh, teal brake plates, and then on the levers, we might go white just to contrast and tie everything in, or maybe that, I don't know what we're doing on that yet. Then we get to the motor. This is a good chunk of what's gonna be in here. Most of it, it will be covered, but we have pedal arms that are rusty. So the, pe the pedals are coming off, arms are coming off and basically I'm going to get this disassembled and blast everything so it's nice clean metal at the bare minimum. Some of it might be getting polished, some of it might be getting coated. I haven't fully decided what we're going to do on that nor do I have a say in the finish. If she wants it polished and shiny, I'm going to be spending a lot of time on the buffing wheel. If she wants to coat them, I got to wait for her to coat them. But I need the cases and the parts disassembled since we are gonna freshen up all the bearings. Uh, I got a new needle bearing coming for the connecting rod on the piston and all of the internals on the bottom end. And then I got a upgraded clutch assembly, not the, not the one I wanted, but the one I wanted was, would have put us way over budget. So if you're just tuning in, Gorelli SSXL, got this dirt Jeep for what it is, paid more than I have for other mopeds, but it is a top tank and, they're cool, I've had them before, they work well. I know what it takes to build a decent one. We have a used VIP pipe that is no longer in production that we cut off of something else. And 
basically just mix and matching parts that I had at the shop. So I had mag wheels at the shop already and new tires, whatever else. The spokes were crusty. I think I got one spoke wheel right there. Uh, crusty, crusty, crusty. So just freshening up and redoing one of these, making it bright, making it obnoxious. Should be a fun little ripper when it's all done. And I, that was the deal. She got to decorate, do her colors. I had no say in any of it, but I do get to do the motor. So Polini 70cc kit, we're gonna do an eight minimum 18 carb, probably a VM18 or a VM20. I wanna do a flange mount, not a clamp on, unless I can find a better, uh, if I have a clamp on 21 at the shop, we're probably gonna do that because it's cheaper. Then running a knockoff Chinese Amazon carb, which, I haven't had the best of luck, but I'm gonna try it one more time. <laughs> Why not, right? I have a box of Makuni jets for the small displacement stuff at the shop. Didn't translate over to the Harleys. Now, I also had a couple of people messaging me on the Sporty. I didn't forget about it. It's, well, I didn't forget that I have it. It's just been so backburnered on the list of priorities. It's still sitting here, kind of right where it was when it's been starting. I've been coming out here and trying to kick it over every now and again and get it dialed before we come back. And I'll tell you exactly what we did on this to get it starting smoothly, consistently. It's been cold, very cold. Uh, we dropped down to like negative 20s for a little while. We got a ton of snow before that. Been shoveling, been doing winter things. Gotta love the Midwest. But... This has not been forgotten about, but definitely pushed farther and farther back on the back burner. Also at the shop, we are switching over the big powder coating oven to gas, straight gas, and there's no real instruction manual for how to do that. So built a firebox, so a lot of welding and fab, a lot of electrical, a lot of me trying to figure out how all of these systems work to make it running and functioning and operational. Finally got that done. Uh, I still got to build a control box and swap over. I have all the heating elements and all of the wiring set up for high voltage stuff, but we're going to transition that and then run the temp controllers and all the other stuff to the front of the oven. But it's drastically cutting costs down. So if you have a bigger oven than a normal little like, I, I look on the, on the internet and I see all the YouTube powder coat at home and all these other things and it's cool. Like, Yes, you can do it. That's how that genuinely that's how I started the shop. Building a couple bikes. Needed powder coating done. Everybody was super unreliable and took forever to get stuff done. Well, that was cool. I'm like, yeah, well, I got a small compressor. We can get this, get a sandblast pot, do this, blast frames outside, get everything prepped, ready to go. Oven's not big enough. Blast booth's not big enough. Blast cabinet's not big enough. It snowballed really hard and it definitely supports my lifestyle of cars and bikes and old crappy crusty stuff. So I have access to all the blasting in the world. I can pay for equipment and tools and bikes and oddball projects through that. I'm happy. I don't wanna to go too far off on a rant on that, but I have been very busy not doing garage things, which means that Sporty has been sitting there exactly where it has been for the last couple weeks want to jump forward. I want to tear this down because we finally got a little bit more caught up at the shop and a lot of this needs to be blasted and cleaned up and coated. Whether we're going to polish or coat, that's up to Dottie, but I got to break this down. And all of the parts are here, but they're sitting in the office at the shop. So hopefully, fingers crossed, I get my parts from the office at the shop tomorrow as long as they're actually there. This will be ready to go, and then we can start grinding away at the cases. So that's kind of where we're at. Just this is the last update video. I'm going to start disassembling this case today. I don't know if it's going to make it in today's video or the next one. We'll see how editing goes. I think I have ideas in my head, and then I change my mind halfway through. So I'm going to throw the, you guys up on a tripod. And then we're going to start disassembling this, and hopefully we can keep track of all of it. I'll leave the camera going. I think we might walk through this one. It won't be a time lapse. Well, maybe part of it, but we'll see. Let me turn you guys around, get set up, grab some metric sockets, and figure out how this thing comes apart. <laughs> 